Gray, and here we are today with George Floyd, with Ahmaud Arbery. This is what happens every single time. So if there was Would that, if there, if, there was that, if there was that one time, there may have been other protests that were, I'm not saying, I'm not, you know, condemning all protesters. I believe in protesting. I'm pushing back against every time your, No, no, no. Okay. What I'm saying is every time their narrative, like when I say becomes mainstreamed, every time their narrative, every time you go, whoo, we're doing Black Lives Matter again, you can bet your ass all across the nation, black neighborhoods are going to burn out, people are going to lose their jobs, and black people are going to lose their lives, right? So that that's the, that's the hypocrisy. The idea that they care about all this other stuff, when in fact, every time they're protesting, it is specifically about police brutality, okay? And black people suffer. So if, you're, if your solution is worse than the problem, it's not a solution. So how many black people have died in these George Floyd protests? So that's, that's how many not, black people have been arrested because of these George, George Floyd protests? How many black people have been impoverished because of these George Floyd protests? That's when it's a good time to sit back and say, "Is what I'm doing working?" Okay, so so let's look at that. So I, I think uh, one, I, I'm, it's an interesting way to frame this. Um, black Lives Matter protests happen every day, and they've happened since 2014. Um, your point is that the media, when when, the, when it becomes a, the national narrative becomes, you know, this is a BLM moment. Shit is on fire. What I'm asking you to consider is that part of what happens is when shit is on fire, they throw BLM onto it, right? That yeah, they don't sure. that they don't account for all these other. I mean, I, I go to BLM protests all the time mm -hmm. where, where people are marching. We're not just marching against police violence. Again, that's just the sexy story. Cable news doesn't actually care about black food insecurity or or or, or, or trans. Tra I mean, one of the most vulnerable populations are, are black trans women uh, in terms of being subject to death. Again, so that's I, because the majority of the, what's the reason that they have a higher death rate? I mean, there, there are a few reasons. There, there are structural factors. But my, we can talk about that too. But my point is, we don't cover it. So, mm -hmm. so part of it is that it's, it's part of it is not that black people don't care about this stuff. It's it's what's sexy to, co to corporate media. Sexy to corporate media That's is fair. black people burning shit down. Right. So, so That's but, fair. I, I would totally give you that. That is usually when it's it, it, it's the media. One for us guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no. look, I, I have said that how you know ninety percent of our problem is the media, and and but at that point though, if your movement is being hijacked and that's how it's being portrayed, how do you combat that? Well, I think you have to, one, you have to decide if you care what the dominant media narrative is. And also what, again, what political work does that media narrative do? Because I'm not, I, I don't also want to pretend that the rebellions that we've been seeing around the country aren't significant and aren't valuable. You know, I just don't think they can be the only game in town, right? If you're, if, if, if you think the rebellions are good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These autonomous cities, the burning and looting of black community and uh, the black, black community's homes and burning down of the neighborhoods, these black people that are crying on screen saying that their neighborhoods are being destroyed, you see that as a good? No. What I'm saying is that I see a movement of uprisings around the country as good. Now, we can discuss tactically whether each specific act is wise. Tell me how it's good. Let's just, let's 